Hi, welcome to a new video dedicated today to uh, a small RC car. It's uh, a 116 brushed uh, cars, okay, an off-road model, a monster truck, okay, and it comes in RTF version. This is the uh, Remo 1631, okay, so I come with this car plus the uh, transmitter. So let's discover a little bit what you can find in the bundle. Let's start, for example, with the uh, battery. It's not a LiPo battery, it's a Lion battery. So a little bit less voltage for the two cellular one, ending with the teething connector. And for example, the weight of this uh, LiPo is um, 92.1 gram and uh, I will give the exact dimension as well because uh, you will see that in the battery bay you don't have a lot of free room so uh, this battery is a 72 by uh, 40 by uh, 20 okay so uh, be sure to check the exact dimension to find a compatible model. You will find a bag, okay, with uh, some Allen key, to be precise, uh, M2 and M3 Allen key, a cross uh, wrench to uh, remove the M4 uh, X screw attaching the uh, wheels, as well as uh, the main gears for transmission gears, okay, so it's a metal one, that's good, and finally you will find some C spare C-clips uh, to, if you lose one for to attach your canopy. Uh, you will find a documentation instruction manual for your transmitter. Okay, this is the RH1, RH2 model. Uh, good news, it's nothing else that the FlySky a compatible radio in my point of view. Okay, so uh, it's this instruction comes in color in both English and Chinese, and it shows how these different settings. Uh, I will explain later the different uh, trimming and um, uh, how to set, for example, some dual rate uh, settings. You will find the uh, instruction of the cars, okay, uh, both in Chinese and English, okay. And you, for example, in different troubleshooting, for example. And I would say the most important for cars is the splitting diagram of your car to uh, assemble or to replace some element. That's good and it's very well done. Okay, so you will find all the information to carefully uh, disassemble your machine. So um, here is, for example, the uh, transmitters. Uh, good news, you have a lot of features associated with it. First, you can uh, nicely grab it. You have a wheel with a piece of thumb. And for example, if you press this button, you can push and transform it from mode two to mode one. That's great. Uh, but when you are doing that, you will have to probably to reverse some sense, okay, to say that now it's left-handed uh, settings. Okay, so I will return into mode two. Uh, you will find the power switch here. Good news. Uh, you will need four uh, AA uh, batteries and any image. Um, battery are working. So you have a small um, red and green LEDs on the transmitter. Uh, this button here, okay, is to uh, set the throttle course range. Okay, by default it's set to 70%, 30%. 70% for the forward movement, 30% for the rear one. So if you want, for example, use this car more in crawling mode, you will be in 50-50. 50% of course for the forward movement, 50 for the backward. Okay, by default it's 70 30. And here you will find all the settings of the radio. So, for example, you have a throttle here, a throttle dual rate. So, actually, it's set to maximum. Uh, thanks to this uh, potentiometer, okay, you can, uh, if you turn on the left, you will reduce the maximum speed of your car. It can be very useful, for example, if you want some uh, very precise control on the throttle. If you're reducing this throttle dual rate, you will be more adapted to, for the uh, crawling or uh, very to uh, run onto high rocks, etc. So, it could be potentially a good, uh, a good feature. Uh, you have the throttle trim, okay, so usually in the central position. If you push it on the right, turn it on the right, it will be more uh, adding bias to the forward movement and to the left more to the backward. Here you have a throttle trim, okay, to have your wheels aligned, okay, perfect. 
perfectly aligned, so adjust with this throttle. And here, this is the uh, dual rate for the steering, could be very useful. Okay, if you, for example, you're planning to run your car at full speed, it's good to reduce a little bit the maximum uh, steering amplitude. Okay, because in case if you set to a too high value, you can have a car accident. So it's a good way for high speed profile to reduce a little bit the amplitude of the maximum steering angle. Okay, that's good. And here, this is the, um, for the left and right, indeed, you can reverse, uh, for example, the, um, the, the default movement, okay, like this. Um, <coughs> You have another button, maybe to control the third free channel uh, we have, okay, so probably you can control a light, okay, to turn on up the light, for example, but there is no dedicated light on the car. Um, okay, so let's more, a little bit focus more on the car right now. Uh, you have some uh, big wheels with some M4 uh, X screws and you have this uh, cross to uh, remove it or uh, disassemble it. Uh, behind this wheel you will find some uh, um, hexagons, there are some M12 formats and behind a lot of um, ball bearings. So everything, all rotation elements have ball bearing installed. You can see here you have the ball bearing, uh, you have a metallic dog bond that's cool, okay, but uh, the only arms uh, shocks uh, system uh, plastic nylon based, okay, so be aware even if you can find here some metallic main uh, structure here blocking the both arms simultaneously and blocking blocked also the rear uh, shock absorber so you have a main metal bar here and also installed on front blocking both the arm suspension shock system and the rear one. So it will be a little bit more stronger than classic uh, without this metallic one, metallic ring just here okay but so now it's a one unique piece of metal so it should bring some uh, solidity. Uh, the front shock as you can see is uh, probably weak on the upper system, upper part. Let's open a little bit the uh, canopy. So I will remove the four uh, C clips. Clips. There. The good news, you have some spare one, four spare one on the uh, here. And voila, what you you can find. So all the bottom chassis is in needle, unfortunately. And I would say that. Uh, the thickness of the plastic is relatively weak and I'm afraid, especially here at the junction between the main plateau here and the, uh, our, I would say the front uh, shock seat part, here it will be a potential weak point here where especially if you are jumping, if you are landing like this, I'm a little bit afraid that this zone will be breakable. Okay, so except that whole alignment, for example, the main, I hope you will be able to see, the main arm, the main um, shaft uh, is in nylon, the transmission shaft is in nylon, okay, not a metallic one, so versus time could be an open question, but it's protected by this uh, top uh, plastic one. Uh, the um, pinion and the main wheel is uh, protected completely jail into the um, uh, plastic cover and the main open question is uh, this uh, cover will be um, um, enough to protect from the sand, intrusion, dust, etc. It's an open question. One little remark about the screws, these are so M2 and I found they are a little bit weak and be aware with the Allen keys, you can damage, uh, strip very easily these uh, uh, screws. So be aware when you try to uh, disassemble it, to uh, try to lubricate them to make um, uh, your life more easy when you want to uh, um, untie to them. Okay, so be aware. The motor is a brush uh, 380 uh, categories, and you have the uh, in the one of the two holes for the cooling on the lower part. So the big open question: if some piece of rock is entering here, can be introduced in the, in this part? May, may, maybe, m probably. Uh, at least you have some um, it. Um, uh, shrink, uh, itching, sorry, uh, cooling the system on the uh, main motors as well on the um, three in one uh, receiver flight, uh, flight controller, controller and uh, um, a main dist uh, power distribution board. So, on the power distribution board, you have an 
also an etching to cool the system. Here is the battery bay. So as you can see, the room inside is not huge, okay? So you have to attach like this, and huh? there is almost no free room available, okay? So be aware of it. It means that it will be hard to find really some a bigger, larger model to install, so it will uh, definitively limit the maximum dura uh, uh, duration of your arm. Um, playing uh, station. Um, so you have to strap it with this uh, velcro band, okay? Um, but it's okay, motors are attached directly with some banana plug. It's good for disassembling. Um, one word about the servo, okay? Uh, as you can see, there is no head ball screws, okay? So directly, so there will be some little play and this servo, I don't have any information about uh, the uh, power of this one, but it should be a nine gram or maybe a little bit more, okay? So we'll see if um, for the full speed, uh, full, uh, the steering will be still uh, precise. Um, there are some ball bearings everywhere, at least on the main uh, transmission shaft as extremities, that's a good news. So all the uh, gear system is metal, okay? So for the durability, that's a good point for such cheap cars, uh, around $70, if I'm not wrong, that's a good point. And here you have a small uh, power switch and you can access very easily from the uh, external, okay, by your finger, that's cool, but you can locate it even in different places. It's a free one, okay, so there is, it's not really taped, so you can place it differently. Here is the small 2.4 gigahertz antenna for the, um, uh, radio frequency part, radio part, protocol part. So as I said earlier, it's a fly sky based, so expect a very good range with this uh, car. More than 100 meters without problem, I guess, on the ground can reach 200 meters, so it could be a potential in FPV car. Okay, so that's cool. So um, I will try to install a small video transmitter and to see how far I can reach from the 2.4 gigahertz part. Okay, so um, the rest of the uh, elements are classic. Unfortunately, the shocks are not um, uh, filled of oil. So, okay, they are classic, just a small spring, okay, unfortunately. So, they are quite um, not weak, but not so strong. So, be aware for high jump, you can easily uh, uh, strike the lower parts, okay? So, um, uh, be aware with the big jump. And as you can see, uh, the needle and plastic uh, will be here. Uh, wow, as you can see, it's already flexible, so potentially breakable, so be aware. And as I say, no real uh, balls, um, uh, screws here, so another little drawback. But what we can expect for such cheap price, it's already much better than classic um, uh, uh, other uh, type of machine for the same range of price. Okay, at least you have some it itching, cooling everything. You have a good radio protocol, a good transmitter. Okay, so um, um, it's not a lipo battery, so I guess you can replace without problem the li the the lion with the lipo. Okay, it's not the zero the two volt extra volt which change a lot of things and should bring a lot of power. So the top speed of this machine is announced to be 50 kilometers. Okay, so per hour. So it's a pretty uh, good. So um, I will uh, conclude my unboxing and quick analysis. Um, for his first, uh, RC car could be a potential a good cars. Should be good to drive it into the uh, uh, off-road condition with not a lot of uh, um, uh, tall and uh, large rocks. Okay, so um, just in the sand, on the ground, okay. Um, about the uh, sand intrusion, uh, probably I will add some uh, silicone, okay, to be sure that uh, this, all the metallic structure, metallic element, rotative element, are well protected. Uh, an open question is here if the motors can be also well protected from any rocks, small piece of rocks of sand intrusion, okay. And uh, except that, the um, uh, Construction is, the building is nice, okay? But the main uh, open question is how robust will be, uh, for example, this car from high jump, especially in this part, or uh, lateral uh, full speed here, if you eat here, okay, I'm afraid the, 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 
the force will be very strong and potentially uh, at least um, uh, bend the uh, metal uh, shaft locking the uh, uh, harms, uh, shock harms part. Okay, so uh, it's an open question. Uh, the frontal shock should be resisted to uh, a moderate crash around 20 30 km per hour. Above this um, speed, uh, you should probably damage it. Okay, so uh, now uh, we will focus more on the demo run. Okay, and uh, try to see how fast is this car and how long is it and maybe I would try to install also a small FPV uh, uh, camera on top to enjoy it.